Hey everybody, welcome to another entry in the Hyrule Compendium, and today we're talking about a staple of the Zelda series, which is the best water dungeons. It's an iconic gimmick that's been used throughout the yeah. series. It makes sense, it's a really kind of easy thing to grasp as a player, how it works. Right, yeah. We see water in real life, we get how water works. Maybe the best thing to start with is what I think is probably the first case of a water dungeon okay. in the series that I wanted to bring up, which is the Swamp Palace. Okay, I thought you were going to say the Ocean Palace from Adventure of Link. <laughs> yeah, or uh, Island <laughs> Palace. There's no. like three island, water, ocean. There's no water in any of these dungeons, though. N no, yeah. so they're, 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 get they're thinking about it, <laughs> Yeah. but they haven't fully gotten there. Or, you know, you walk on the step ladder, the Legend of Zelda, right? Right, yeah, yeah. But the Swamp Palace in A Link to the Past is really where water as a mechanic first mm -hmm. kicks off. It doesn't have the trappings of what later be define water dungeons, which mm -hmm. is uh, being very complex. <laughs> right, no, it's very simple. Yeah, yeah it's, it's actually a very linear dungeon. You know, you go to an area, there's like usually like a canal that you can't pass, so you have to go off to another pathway, mm -hmm. pull a lever to make the water flow or whatever, and swim to progress. Yeah. There's nothing complicated, I feel. No. Like, it's not like, oh, do I gotta lower, do I, how do I lower the l water afterwards and... Well, that's that's the thing is, yeah, once you pull the lever, it's, mm -hmm. that's it, you know? Yeah, you you don't have to reset changed. things or move things back, which... Mm -hmm. is what will become mm -hmm. a staple in the series. But I, I really like this dungeon still, though. It's, you know, it, I don't think it has to be more complicated than it is. Because every time there's always some unique th thing blocking your path, some sort of puzzle that you have to, like, right figure out. And it's always a little bit different. They always tweak it, you know? Yeah. So. It's like the same exact room three times, I think. But, like, every time it's a little, yeah. It's a little different, yeah. Yeah. In the Link to the Past, it's one of the most thematic dungeons yep. as far as the elements go, because okay. you do have all these water elements and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. it's a yeah, it's a standout to me. So you started with uh, the first one, so I'm going to jump to the last the one. The last one. <laughs> yeah, the Divine Beast Varuta. Does the boss battle with the, the Divine Beast count with Sidon? Is that part of the dungeon? I guess so, yeah. Well, that's a fun boss battle, I might add. I think that's my favorite boss battle, like, as you enter the dungeon. That oh, co-op with Sidon. Where you go up the... With the... When you're shooting the shock arrows. Sure, yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Fantastic. And this one holds a little special place for me because uh, when I first played Breath of the Wild, we had no idea what the, what the dungeons were going to look yeah. like. And this was the first Divine Beast I went to. So this was the introduction of this, oh, you can manipulate the, mm. you know, so it was like, this is the first one. Which is kind of unfortunate, because I think it's by far the best mechanic, too. We were talking about how there's, okay, in A Link to the Past, there's, you pull the lever, mm -hmm. and that's it. And then in some other ones we're going to talk about, you're moving things up and down and back and forth. But in this, it's like, there's multiple locations you can move it on, but there's not... You don't have to really think about it as much. It's like, okay, do I put it here? No. Okay, I put it here. Okay, that. Yeah. You move the trunk of the elephant around, but it it's never, it's like halfway in between that where it feels like you're moving it around a bunch to solve different puzzles, which you are, but it's, it's never, it's because you can do it at any location. You can always pause or whatever, look at your map and move it. Yep. So it's it's not like in some of the other ones we'll talk about where you have to go to a specific Backtrack location. Backtrack a little bit, yep. yeah. Yeah. So it makes it, it it's cool because it's open-ended and stuff like that, but it's not, mm -hmm. the, the moving the water isn't really the challenge of it, really. There's some puzzles in that you solve without any usage of the water, of mm -hmm. the trunk. Yeah. So it's like you have to figure out when you can use it, how you can use okay, you know. Yeah. I think it's a good dungeon. I love <laughs> the boss battle with the Divine Beast. Uh, water Blight, I think, is okay. but I think all other water dungeons that that are, like, this sort of way, where you're going to different places and changing the water level and stuff like that, are all based on 
the water temple from Ocarina of Time. To me, it's it's the most iconic one. We did a whole video mm-hmm. about it, so we we have a whole deep dive on that if you want to go check. But it really it really did establish this this more complicated formula for changing the water levels and exploring different parts of the dungeon where, when the water is at that level. It's maybe my favorite one because okay. of that. I mean, it's really tricky. I mean, it has that reputation that everyone talks about. But yeah, this is a dungeon that my mind on it totally changed after 2011 oh okay yeah with yeah. ocarina 3 because you can't forget how annoying this dungeon was you uh-huh. know with pause go to the next screen pick the boots unpause do it and do it all over again about about 80 times mm-hmm. i want to say what i like about uh about this dungeon and this is i'm gonna just throw this out there because this is gonna be my next dungeon i'm gonna talk about is jabu jabu's belly from oracle of ages yeah that's directly inspired by it is the 2d version of the ocarina of time water temple i really feel that way yeah 100 percent. yeah and both of these dungeons have very similar elements where you go to a room when in both in both of these dungeons there's high medium and low where the water level Mm -hmm. and in in all in both of them you go to a a room when the water level is low and then you come back to it when it's medium or high, and the room is totally changed. Uh huh. Like, and there's different elements and different puzzle solving. I'd say maybe even more so in in ages, but you have to kind of remember, like, ah, oh, I can't reach that. But if I mm-hmm. come back here with the water being differently, then I can reach that platform where there's a crack in the wall that uh-huh. they made you see it. But you have to remember to go there. And in both of the in both dungeons that we mentioned, like, there's some non-linearity where you mm-hmm. can go wherever you want, but you got to remember. And there's a lot of backtracking. It's so tricky. I like. Yeah. I never forget it now, but like. Right. I get why people. It's frustrating with that. though. It's like like. Especially if you miss it, because if you set the water to the third level, you gotta reset right. the whole cycle. Yeah. One distinction I think between those two dungeons is, it, it is hard to remember stuff like that cracked wall or whatever. But I I think of in Ocarina of Time, you do have this. It's a common thing in all the. A lot of Zelda dungeons is that central room mm-hmm. that kind of grounds you in the dungeon and it helps you memorize things a little bit better. And it's 3D and you can see the water right. changing. Jabu Jabu, it's a lot harder. It, there's no, you don't realize. There's some rooms where you realize, oh, this is the same room, but I'm on a higher floor. Uh-huh. But those are not very common. Mm-hmm. So you don't have that verticality. And it, it makes it actually more annoying, actually, because you don't feel like the the... The floors are connected, whereas in Ocarina, they're mm-hmm. especially, mainly just that main room. Yeah. They are connected. I mean, you really have to d- then just really pay attention to the map and see, I okay, I'm on the third floor. That's a thing that the 2D games sometimes struggle with a little yeah. bit. I'm noticing a trend here. Uh, in the Swamp Palace, Link the Past, you get the hookshot. Okay. In Ocarina of Time, okay. kind of weak. You just get an upgraded hook shot, the long shot. Uh-huh. The next dungeon I'm going to talk about is the Lake Bed Temple from okay. Fire Princess and the dungeon item, the hook shot. The claw shot. Claw shot. Like, <laughs> yeah. What, what is this? Why is it? What is it with water and claw? Like, do these even. It doesn't really have to be that way too because in the swamp palace you never like hook shot over water yeah. or anything because yeah. you can just swim so and on top of this oracle of ages Jabu Jabu Bell, you get the long hook the long switch hook oh, wow. which is so we're uh every single dungeon it's a damn claw like, that's interesting yeah i don't know why you they do even... that lake bed temple to me we talked about the centralized room i like the the idea of there's these two floodgates and you gotta open it, and yeah. then you gotta like follow the water to get it to the main room. It's, and then you wrote, the, I like the staircase. I can see how it, it would appeal to a wider group of people, because it kind of splits the line between the Swamp Palace and the Water Temple. Okay. In that you have this moving, this moving thing in the center of the staircase that can alter, you know, the status of the dungeon, but with the water. Like, once you pull the water level, like, you never have to think about it again. Right. So you can return to them because they'll have, like, some extra goodies there mm-hmm. 
to get, but like once you get like the claw shot or whatever, but you never have to like actually go back there right. and change it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it still is tricky. It's it's still tricky, but it, it I do think it's a little bit more straightforward than the water temple. Yeah, I think it's a lot more straightforward yeah, than the water temple. I wouldn't say it's entirely linear, but it is because there's a lot yeah. of branching like. Like there's multiple hard pieces you can get that mm-hmm. you don't need to get. And... In terms of the progression, though, it's yeah totally linear. When you get the water to flow, mm-hmm. flows down that way, go that way. You yeah, know, follow the water is kind of yeah. how I feel about it. Maybe not the fights now, not the greatest, but I actually like both the bosses in this. You got the giant Deku Toad. It reminds me of how in a link to the past you have Argus. Argus. Yeah. Okay, You're... where you hook shot the ro- the rock eyeball things off of him, and okay. then you have the mini boss in a. Twilight Princess, where you do kind of a similar thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got the eyes that fall, and then you bomb arrow his, or you you shoot his tongue. Yeah. I guess you yeah. don't hook shot them off, but I think it no, was like... you don't have the hook shot. He gives you the hook shot right. afterwards. Yeah. It's the same idea where there's a bunch of things attached to him. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a common theme in water dungeons, which I think we'll get to shortly. <laughs> I had to get one on here because I knew you wouldn't want to talk about it, or you wouldn't you wouldn't put it on your list. So, yeah. and that's the Great Bay Temple from Majora's Mask. Not a fan of this dungeon. What what about it aren't you a fan of? I think this is a, a bit of like a lot of the times when I think of my favorites, I think about my experience when I first played. Mm-hmm. And this was the game that made me. This was the dungeon that made me stop playing. Okay. I literally stuck. I I, I got I got stuck. I was frustrated and mm-hmm. I stopped playing and I put the game down for months. And then I came back to it, and I didn't want to play it, so I started a new file. Okay. And I got to the Great Bay Temple again, and uh, then I used the guide. And uh-huh. I thought, as a kid, I don't know if this was, like, rational, but, like, I thought the changing the water flow direction was too complicated. And mm-hmm. I couldn't tell how the rooms connected with each other. There were, like, these paths that were, like, meaningless, like... In other dungeons, you know, okay, you go through that door and it leads to that room. But, like, this one, I couldn't visualize that. The map doesn't really help you. Okay. You just have to kind of memorize it. I think it actually isn't, like, nearly as complicated as the water temple. Once you turn the lever to get the the little sub water things flowing, you don't touch mm-hmm. it. And you just follow, you follow it. It's kind of like what they added to the water temple to make it easier, where you follow the lit up pipe the only tricky part is going back to reverse the flow or whatever but i i don't know what it is because i just never had that issue with okay it. so i think there were some there were some backtracking where you had to go back to previous rooms after you got the ice arrows mm-hmm. so yeah there was a little bit of there's like, there's backtracking but it's yeah to me it i don't know to me it makes sense so and you fight wart who uh, is kind of like Argus in yeah. that sense. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to get his little bubbles to fall off of him, but you can use mm-hmm. the hook shot, which you get before mm-hmm. entering the dungeon. In terms of water theming, you're swimming around as a Zora. It's it's very water. I I, I like swimming with Zora Link in Great Bay. Uh huh. Open. It's fun. Yeah. In the confines of the dungeon, I don't like it. I always hated that middle room when you're like trying to get him to go somewhere and he never wants <laughs> to go. Sometimes it can be a pain in the butt, yeah. When people say, I like the swimming controls in Majora's Mask, I'm like, I hate that room. I actually like that they uh, people complain that they like nerfed the Zora swimming because okay. you swim slow and they're like, you swim so slow. But for in the dungeon there and in like the pirate's hideout where you have to be kind of pr- more precise and it's not better. like... It is better, yeah, because... You're not just like I was just like blasting into like yeah. the mines and stuff all, like that. All that like blast processing. Yeah. <laughs> I feel there's a few honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Yeah. There's a lot of these like the mixed, half water. The half water dungeons. Yeah. So Minish Cap has two of them, I think. The Deep Wood Shrine is like water. It's like a dual Pokemon type water grass, and then the Temple of Drop is water ice. Uh, mm-hmm. They're both, I think, solid. Skyward Sword has a pair as well. We didn't talk about the ancient cistern, but like. Uh, it's mm-hmm. got that. It's like water and uh, would be water type and dark type. If, dark it, was type, a, if yeah. it was a Pokemon, Ancient Cistern is one of the. I think one of the best dungeons in the series too. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to take away from it. I, when I was just thinking of like, what are the ones we got to talk about? Mm-hmm. I felt like there was the two that are like the first one, and then the like one that really mm-hmm. everything was based on, and then 
I have a third one that yeah. I want to talk about. But. It's worth noting that the item you get in Ancient Sister, not a hook shot, but a grappling with a Okay, whip. okay, <laughs> yeah, that, that so sort of follows the this, theme. This still goes, and it's got the greatest boss in the history of Zelda. I don't know if it's called if it's a water dungeon. No, this is one we were debating about uh, the sand ship. No, it's the it's sand. You're on floating on water, but uh, there's no water, so it's a sea of sand. Otherwise, that would be number one on my list. And that even has in uh, Skyview. There's a water level p- puzzle, so yeah, you know, I guess that kind of works. Did we miss any? Did we miss any? Well, there's the uh, uh, in Spirit Tracks. There's the ocean. Ocean Temple, yeah. Temple, which has no water at all. You're, yeah, that's... You are just... I would not call that a water dungeon. It is as much a water dungeon as the Ocean Palace in uh, yep. uh, Link's Adventure Despite uh, it being Adventure completely Link. submerged underwater. Yeah. Yeah, kind of yeah. lame. Oh, there's Angler's Tunnel yes. in Link's Awakening, which I think is a fine dungeon. Solid. But Catfish's Maw... Not a water dungeon. No, it's not. It's in the water. It's a fish that's in the water, but not a water dungeon. Yeah. Same with Jabu Jabu's Belly and Ocarina of Time. That is not a water dungeon, no. Yeah. That is a... Uh, it's something. It's You're inside something. There's a handful of levels in Triforce Heroes that are water-based, but... Doesn't count. If we if we forgot one, I guess leave a comment. Zora's but... Domain in Hyrule Warriors original? <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> is it one of the six worlds in the Legend of Zelda board game, a water-based one? Yeah, there's probably some Zoras. <laughs> yeah. Again, I think using the raft to get to the one <laughs> counts. So let us know your favorites. Give us a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. What about a uh, Wand it? of Gamelon? Uh, the uh, lake. Uh, oh, there's a lake in there. Sh- Chateau Lake. <laughs> we should have talked about Honorable mention. Uh, You have to ride an alligator across the water? Oh, I'll, I'll never forget that.